Hey guys, and welcome to another video from Performance Trends. This is Zach, and today we're going to go over the example 4.2 out of the Engine Analyzer Pro user manual, specifically the section for advanced users found on page 175. In today's example, we're going to be using the same profile we've been using with the other two, the small block Chevy. The first thing we're going to do in this example today is make sure that the cam valve train dynamics is turned on. As you can see on this page, there's some spring specs and weights that you can now enter. You can see that the coil bind here is blank because the input was not available when we produced the example file many years ago. The program will fix this when we calculate performance by making an assumption based on the inputs that we put on this page. It's very important to note that if you're going to use valve train dynamics, you know all the specs on this page. If you don't know every single one of these specs, it could very well cause many more problems to your calculations than solving any issues or answering any questions that you had. That being said, let's take a look at some torque and horsepower numbers as well as some graphs with the cam and valve train dynamics turned on. I'm going to change the number of RPM steps to 10 just to ensure that we get up and through 7,000 RPMs with our calculations. You can see here that our, this is letting us know that our program is going to make an assumption for coil bind based on the numbers that we put in so we can calculate performance. This is a notification letting us know that there could be some problems with our combination, but because we're using a profile from a restricted class of racing that's very popular, we're going to go ahead and calculate performance anyway. Upon reviewing the calculations, you may notice that the torque and horsepower are a little bit different with the Calculate Valve Train Dynamics option set to No. You will also notice that in this example, you have a note up here listed as Valve Toss in the number, Notes Summary section. This is highlighting the fact that the program predicts this combination may toss at one of the RPMs run during the calculation. We can go ahead and see exactly where the program predicts toss by using the scroll bar. Down here you can see that the program doesn't expect toss until at least 7000 RPMs. If you click on this notes tab right here, you can see a summary of all the notes brought up in this section. In this example we're particularly interested in this section right here that says the engine encountered valve toss on the intake and exhaust side, which you can see right here. Although the engine power may not drop, the engine's valve train will not survive. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some graphs that may give us an indication of exactly what's happening around these RPMs. We're going to go ahead and click on RPM-Cycle to make sure we're on the cycle data. We'll go in here and click Mixed, Use Save Graph Pattern, Intake Valve Train Dynamics is already selected, and we'll click OK. Now we'll back out of here, we'll hit, click on graph again so we can choose our RPM. We want to look at 7000 RPMs. I'm now going to increase the scale of the graph so we can get a little bit clearer picture of what's going on here. And we'll go ahead and just place our cursor right here for now. You can see in this graph that the valve train is like a diver on a diving board. At start of opening ramp, the actual lift is less than desired lift. That is like the diver has jumped down on the board and is getting ready to launch off of it. The launch is when the green line goes above the blue line. The more flexible the valve train and the more aggressive the cam profile, the more likely to launch off the cam profile and not follow the profile accurately. All this and the details of the RPM you are running, spring rates, and masses will determine what this graph looks like and how the valve train will operate. On the closing ramp, there is again a high force when the follower again comes back in contact with the actual ramp as the valve seats. High forces on the closing ramp is what can snap the head off the valve, 
which is obviously very destructive. You can actually calculate the amount of bend or tossing by subtracting the theoretical valve lift from the actual valve lift. As you can see here, this would be approximately 43 thou at this exact point where our cursor lies. You can also see a more exact pushrod force that the program will expect wherever you lie your cursor. As long as you click on a point that's on the actual graph line, rather than right here or right here, you can click on anywhere on the actual graph line and you should get a cursor. It can be a little bit difficult in some of these more slanted areas. We'll go up here. Let's take a peek at this table 4.4, just below this example area. This table right here is going to show us all of the specs based on the three cams that we've tested in example 4.2. You can see that the restricted engine likes the original cam for performance, especially at lower RPMs. However, at higher RPMs, it has a tendency to valve toss and produce a high push rod load due to its aggressive acceleration rates. Test results will generally show more low RPM torque and less high RPM horsepower with the valve train dynamics being simulated. The Engine Analyzer Pro allows you to investigate the complex workings of the engine's valve train with just a couple of button clicks. I hope you've learned a lot and we'll see you in the next video.